Greetings. Electrofogy here. Uh, Eagle left a comment on my uh, What is a Transistor video. Uh, I know that uh, the comments in YouTube are restricted to very few characters. So uh, I thought instead of responding to your response, I'd make a video that'll give me a little bit more time to see what we have to say here. <clears throat> Let me read yours. Your comment is, Transistor. This is an abbreviated combination of words transconductance, or transfer, and varistor. The device logically belongs in the varistor family and has the transconductance, or transfer impedance, of a device having gain, so that this combination is descriptive. I know what you're saying, uh, but let's start well, what you're saying is that the word transistor is not short for transforming resistor, like I said. It is short for transconducting or transfer varistor. Is it really? Well, let's take a look. First of all, you say it's transconductance. Well, what is conductance? Well, conductance is the inverse of resistance. If we have a component that has a high resistance, we say it has a low conductance. If it has a low resistance, like wire, it has high conductance. It conducts very well. So, really, a resistor and a conductor are kind of two sides of the same coin. So you can say something that has very high conductance is the inverse of a very high resistor. And when I uh, said that it was a variable resistor. In my second What is a Transistor video, I showed that when you have a high signal on the base, the resistance is low. If you have a low signal on the base, the resistance is high. Now, um, it would be more correct mathematically to say that if I have a high signal at the base, the conductance is high. And when I have a low signal at the base, the conductance is low. That is more of a one-to-one -one mathematical relationship. However, both of these statements are correct. So whether you want to call it a transforming resistor or a transforming conductance device, it's pretty much the same. So technically, your answer is more correct. Good job. But once again, it's pretty much the same thing. Second, varistor. What is a varistor? Well, a varistor is basically a resistor. However, it's only a resistor after a certain threshold voltage or current has been exceeded. If the signal going through this varistor is below that threshold, then it doesn't act like a typical resistor anymore. And this is true of a transistor. If the input signal is less than about 0.7 volts for silicon, it won't act like a transforming resistor, or a variable resistor, or a variable conductance device. It'll just act like nothing. So, you're right. It's not exactly a resistor. It's a varistor. It only acts like a resistor after you've passed that threshold voltage. Once again, you got me. Nice going. You're absolutely correct. So, transconducting varistor. Now, um... Once again, your, your, your uh, explanation is correct, and it's more correct than mine. Mine is an oversimplification, but that's really what I was going for in my videos, is to make a more simplistic explanation for people who know what resistors are, but they're not exactly 100% on conductance devices. And really, if you think about it, if you know what a resistor is, you know what a conductance device is, because they're just basically the same. Just one is the inverse of the other. <clears throat> one thing I'd really be interested in knowing, uh, Mr. or Ms. Eagle, when did you learn about transconducting varistor? Did you learn about this in an intro to semiconductors course? Or did you learn about it in an advanced physics course? If your education was anything like most people's education in the U.S., you probably only learned that in an advanced physics course. 
And when you learned that, did it ever come across your mind that if you'd known that during the Intro to Semiconductors class, understanding semiconductors would have been so much easier? Because that's what a lot of people who watch my videos are telling me. That it's so much easier when you understand about this stuff at the introductory level. So why don't they teach that at the introductory level? I don't know. I was lucky. I read this by accident in the middle of an electronics textbook in a paragraph that wasn't assigned reading. I just happened to skip across it. And all of a sudden I read that and my life changed. And people still aren't being taught this. And this is very important to know. People who go through college can even graduate with a full-on degree and still not have this understanding. And that's a crime. It's just a tragedy. And it's a shame that I'm the one that has to make this video because I'm not an engineering physicist. I haven't had to do a, a derivative in decades. I haven't seen the inside of a classroom in uh, upwards of 20 years or so. But somebody had to make this video. And I've had this video in my mind for a long time, and I knew that it's, if somebody had to make it, might as well be me. So, even though my explanation is not 100% correct, it's still oversimplified, but it's easy enough that it will work in the real world, and that's where it counts. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I mean to make a video that covers more advanced semiconductor topics. It's a little bit difficult for me because, once again, I don't really know this stuff all that well. I'm having to relearn a lot of stuff to make a, a proper video. And some people have commented, you know, this video is not exactly about the internal physics. Exactly correct! It shouldn't have to be. Now, mind you, somebody should make a simplistic ver version of it. And it looks like it's going to have to be me again. So, look for that. I'm not promising it's going to be very good, because I'm not 100% on all the knowledge. But I'll do my best, and I hope it helps you. Once again, thanks for watching.